Thank you guys for attending our technical deep dive series. Uh, my name is Moin Khan and I'm Chief Technology Officer for Zentegra. We are going to use this time to understand more about uh, VMware and VMware stack starting from um, uh, Horizon, uh, Anywhere Workspace and SASE. Uh, along with me, I have uh, Rezwan who is our solution architect uh, on uh, VMware Workspace uh, stack. He's going to take us through the entire uh, Anywhere Workspace journey, uh, starting with Horizon, Workspace ONE, and ending with SASE. We will have, uh, we will have a small uh, uh, demo towards the end. And uh, this demo environment that, we, that Zentegra has, it is a value add to our customers. So you are more than welcome to uh, uh, come to us uh, if you need access to this demo environment to uh, uh, evaluate product to look into uh, what uh, uh, VMware capabilities is and uh, uh, talk to us on um, how Zentegra can support. With that, I will uh, pass it on to Rizwan and have him uh, take us through um, Anywhere Workspace. Rizwan, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Moeen. Hi, team. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Rizwan. I'm Solutions Architect in Zentech for Canada. And today we're going to be talking about Anywhere Workspace Technical Deep Dive uh, in, in, this, in the Technical Deep Dive series. So, here's a small agenda that we'll be covering up. Uh, we're going to be having, uh, we're going to be talking about what is Anywhere Workspace as a platform. We're going to be talking about the different Modal work styles, different work styles actually that the Anywhere Workspace brings into the, into the picture today. Uh, we're right. talking about the you are still on slide number yeah. one. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. Yeah. Can we see the agenda now? Yes. Thank you. Oh, sorry for the network here. Yeah. So, this is a small agenda that we'll be covering up, uh, talking right about the integrated workflow solutions, the challenges that comes across in, in the traditional architecture. What is VMware Secure Access? And then we'll be talking about the workspace, anywhere workspace architecture. Following to that will be the journey to anywhere workspace. Where do we start and how do we start? And then any questions, any questions you may have, we'll be glad to answer. So moving ahead further, if you if you, if you look at the, the work styles today, right? I mean, users have moved across in multiple work styles. Users uh, users are working from home, users are work, also working from a remote. Uh, remote network um, who is also working from office itself. So if we consolidate all of these users, we have users who are working 100% remote in certain organizations. We have hybrid work styles where the users uh, come into a, in office for two to three days and the rest of the days they work from home. And then we have 100% work locations like hospitals, medical facilities, pharmaceutical areas, pharmaceutical industries. So these are the work styles that, that we see across. And with this kind of work styles, even the applications have moved across, right? I mean, you have our Exchange or um, HR-based applications or, or CRM-based applications will now move across to the cloud. And some of the applications still data center. The application moving in such a way, even the users across have a different way to access these applications. Now, with the users moving out of the office, the users moving out of the branch, it has become very difficult for the end users to access the, all of these applications. And there are a couple of, there are a couple of queries, and a lot of, lot of uh, a lot of things that happens across when we when we talk about when we talk about accessing these applications, and this happens, and this concern is on both sides, and the user side as well as in the organization side on the IT side. On the user side, you always have you always have a concern like how do I access these applications? On the IT side, we have we have concerns like how do we ensure that we have a seamless and always on available access to these applications. How do I protect my data? How do I, in fact, how do I support the personal devices that the users will bring in? How do I trust these kind of devices? Like any devices that, that the user may have in his, in, in his house or in his, in his office or in his, uh, in his satellite office, he may use those devices to access applications like Salesforce or Office 365 for that matter. How do I trust those devices? How do I ensure that we have always on secure access to all kinds of applications? Now moving ahead further, if you if you if you look at these, you can look at all, all these resources, all these challenges. There are typical top three challenges that comes across actually from the end user perspective, uh, as well as the organization perspective. One is the sub optimal experience. When we talk about 
how do we ensure that we have a seamless experience when the user launches or when the user resource access to the resources? Um, on the IT segment, on the organizational perspective, we have the, the concern about how do we how do we have how do we ensure that we have um, uh, security uh, that, that can circle around complete 360 degree, right from the user accessing applications, users using those data across on their on their devices. And lastly, is the operational complexities to ensure that all the operations are smooth, all the operations are seamless across, uh, no matter where the users are accessing the application from. Now, <clears throat> when uh, all of these organizations, all of these issues that we talk about can be met across with the VMware Anywhere Workspace platform. The VMware Anywhere Workspace is a concept which is built around three major solutions, VMware Workspace One, Carbon Black, and VMware Sassen. So you can be talking about uh, all of these solutions actually in this session, and uh, just let us know if you have any questions, you'll be glad to answer all of these, all of the questions of us. So talking about uh, going ahead further, actually, like how do we bring the exceptional experience across for all the end users? If we look at the end users life cycle, when we talk about uh, accessing, when we talk about users accessing their end user devices, uh, it all starts with day zero, right? When the user goes ahead, uses his device for the first time um, to access any application, he tries to find he tries to find out his username, his password, is the URL of the application, or tries to find the location where the application is. Um, day one is something that the user, user goes ahead, tries initiating or tries circulating, by collecting all of these applications across, try to install all the native applications, if uh, native, native applications, web-based applications, ensuring that how web-based applications can be accessed, maintain all the bookmarks, and finally it goes ahead with day two, day two and onwards. So day two is something that the user has now all access to the application with username, password, everything all filled up. He, he starts working on the application. If he has any issues, he raises the ticket, um, the SR ticket, and then um, moves ahead, discusses with the IP, and starts working on his on an application and, and become productive. So, <clears throat> with all of these days, you know, day one and day two, day two life cycle that we talk about, we always want to ensure that users' access uh, should be seamless. Uh, the user should be able to perform, you should be able to work on this application properly so that he can be productive at any moment of time. VMware Workspace One is one solution that we talk about uh, not only managing these app devices, but also managing application across any operating system, across any platform. And this can be for any kind of use case. When we talk about uh, giving access to the application for the remote users. It can not only be a device which is given by the organization, but it can also be a device which the user has itself. Say, for example, our mobile phone, right? We use our mobile phone to access emails, uh, use, a mobile, use our mobile devices to access SMBCs, and many other applications that, we, that the organization provides to us. So Workspace One ensures that the users will be able to access this application in a, in a, in a seamless way, but at the same time, it also ensures that the user will be able to securely access this application on, on an organization perspective. Let's talk about uh, the modern factory provisioning actually and how, how it takes care of uh, and how it actually works in traditional deployment model. So if you look at the uh, laptop which are provisioned today for the end users, uh, it, it goes with this cyclic chain, right? It goes ahead with the uh, starting with OEM, where the laptop is provisioned by the factory engineers, it is then handed over to distributors and integrators, IT, and then finally to the end user. The end users would go ahead, use this laptop, and finally, once the end user logs out, when the user is out of the organization, he gives it back to the IT. This is how the complete chain process, this is how the chain completely works here. And now with the, uh, uh, with, the, with the complete life cycle, right? Uh, the, the biggest change, which the biggest hops that are involved here is the distributors, the integrators, and finally to the IT, right? And this is what we normally, this is what we normally see when we, when we get a laptop, when an end user gets a laptop here. But in case of a modern deployment, we can cut down the complete chain, which means what we're saying here is the laptop can be directly provisioned from factory to the end user. So we break down this chain of having from distributor to IT and give this laptop directly to the end user. Think about a mobile phone, right? We work, when we go ahead and buy a mobile phone from a mini store, um, we, we, we just unpack that phone, uh, log into that phone, use our Apple ID or Google, Google Pay ID, 
that's it. Uh, the application starts installing in the devices and the, the device becomes ready on the set, on the go itself. So this is what we this is what we do across <clears throat> exactly the same thing with the with the laptop as well. So the user gets this laptop pre-provisioned, all applications have been deployed, along with the user policies been deployed. Uh, uses laptop being provisioned across on the domain, and the user is now ready to have to have all the applications to work all the other applications. At the same time, the laptop is also pre-provisioned, which means it is now connected with Workspace One as a platform and provides a complete visibility, 100% visibility across uh, to the IT on what kind of application, what kind of compliance the device has today. Okay. So along with the <laughs> Uh, along with the best performance that we provide here, the scalability and the, and the seamlessness that we provide to the end user, we also go ahead and have um, a, a proper uh, <clears throat> a, a proper PCO for this particular deployment, which means you go ahead and save a lot of IT time itself while you go ahead and deploy it across this particular platform. So if you look at a traditional method, we spend hours and hours to deploy and configure a laptop. But with the modern with the modern factory provisioning method, you actually save all of these laptops, you have to save all of these durations, and you simply go ahead and deploy it across the application and give it to the end user. And the end user just goes ahead, uh, just uses this laptop. Okay. Let's talk about the, the catalog experience that we get across. With Workspace One, uh, all kinds of devices have the same experience across when they, when they access the applications. So if, if, you, if you have a mobile device or, or a Windows machine or a, or a Mac, Mac OS machine or a tablet device for that matter, when you log into Workspace One as a platform, you'll be able to see all kinds of applications, be it a SaaS-based applications like a Salesforce for that matter, a native applications um, uh, like, uh, uh, like a Workday application which is installed on the devices. It can be a web-based application. It can be also a virtual application which is coming from Citrix. Well, Citrix then desktop, or it can be a VMware Horizon application. So all of these applications can be can be accommodated across, can be can be consolidated across under one hub app catalog, uh, hub app catalog, and this can be given across in multiple devices. Not only that, we also leverage SSO here or a multi-factor authentication system for any kind of device that that comes across. It can be remote onboarding. When we say remote onboarding, which means the user doesn't have to come to office and configure his laptop and get all the application. The moment the user's laptop is given across to the, to the, to the, uh, to the, to the end user, it simply goes ahead, configures by itself, and you have all the application list that, you, that is provisioned for you, that is authorized for you. Secondly, there are multiple tools which have been given across on the, uh, on the workspace one, starting right from people's search, which is basically the consult to collaborate with, with, your, with your colleagues, with, uh, with your manager, uh, along with that, we also have corporate communication staff, which means uh, if, you, if you need to have any communication being done across with your IT, with your stakeholders, with your, with your, uh, your colleagues, you can make use of the communication staff. And apart from this, uh, you also have self-services portal. The self-services portal actually provides you the capability of uh, changing the passwords or um, going ahead and deploying any kind of application that you wanted, want, wanted to have across the devices. And this is how you would be able to go ahead and do a lot of other, lot of other, lot of other provisioning, a lot of other tools that can be deployed across by yourself without going ahead and, and contacting or without going and raising a ticket with the IT. With this, uh, we also provide uh, remote, capa remote control capability tools as well. So with Workspace One, we also have a tool called Workspace One Assist. With the help of Workspace One Assist, help this team will be able to log into the remote user's device and uh, troubleshoot if there are any issues that comes across on, on that particular device. So this is this is the part of day two management where the users where the users can go ahead uh, raise a case with the help desk uh, to to have a support on any application. The help desk can simply come in. They can they can go ahead uh, log into this device, have a screen view like what you can see right now on the screen. Um, and go ahead and see what is what's wrong with the application, troubleshoot that application, fix that application issues, and log out from there. So the 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 fix the the, the issue that we just across is pretty fast here, uh, and the users will be able to go ahead, uh, log off, uh, log off, and start working on the application to be productive again. The other aspect here is uh, we, we talked about 
uh, remote control, we talked about the, the seamless experience, we talked about the Hubbard catalog. But here's the other part that we also need to talk about is user experience. Like how do we score user experience? So the workspace one intelligence brings in the capability of Dean. And this is where we talk about digital employee experience management, where the experience of the user uh, is, is being ranked, is being, is being calculated and see where is the problem the user would be facing across. This is the way in which you can proactively go ahead and uh, check what the users, what the issue the user may face on his application, on his devices, on the network that he may be using it across. And you go ahead and proactively troubleshoot those issues, quickly resolve those issues before the user can go ahead and log in a case with the IT team or before the user can go ahead and um, use that application. <clears throat> and the, the intelligence platform will actually go ahead and provide you all the reporting and analytics that, that, can, that can provide details of where the application, which application is causing the problem. And based on that, you can go ahead and remediate those, those issues that can come across in the application. So now we talk about uh, VMware SASE as a part. So um, before we talk about uh, VMware SASE, let's talk about the traditional infrastructure or the architecture that we have today uh, in terms of network, in terms of security. So uh, when we talk about network, right? I mean, we, we talk about uh, layer three or layer four devices, uh, layer two devices for that matter. We also talk about like SD-WAN capability, which is basically uh, the software-defined uh, WAN environment, which provides you performance, reduces the jitter latencies. Uh, we, we, we talk about WAN optimization system. We talk about bandwidth aggregation. Same thing with the security as well. We talk about multiple security solution that ensures that your application access remains secure. And then we talk about the edge services. With whatever solutions that we talk about today, these solutions are more focused on an on-prem environment, on a data center environment where the users would consistently connect to a data center, either sitting in the office itself or working from outside or working from home. Now, with the, with the kind of environment that the users are working today, uh, users working from home, the applications scattered across multiple cloud environments, uh, these kind of management approach would not work out. Yeah? And this is where VMware SASE comes into the role. This is where SASE comes into the role, basically. The SASE is basically a secure access service edge, uh, which goes ahead and um, which go ahead, extrapolate all of these functionalities that you saw that you see in the data center and pushes, pushes these functionalities to the cloud environment. Think about this infrastructure that we that we normally see it, right? In the traditional, this is a traditional infrastructure that we see. We have a DMC zone. Uh, we have uh, an MZ uh, 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 land zone, basically. And in, in these zones, you have, you, get, you have multiple solutions like VPN concentrators, the firewalls, switches, uh, IDS, IPS, and all of the CASPI solutions that you have today, right? Now, with the applications moving across to the cloud, this data center components have not changed, which means if the IT now wants to have a complete visibility of, of the end users accessing the cloud applications, they have to bring this connection across. They have to forcibly bring their user request across in the data center where these, where these components are deployed and then route these connections, route these connections across to the, to the cloud environment. This is, what, this is what happens. In a VMware SASE, in, in the SASE environment, what we do here is all of these components are being now extrapolated to the cloud environment. This is what really happens. So all of your IDS, IPS solutions, the, uh, the, uh, the cloud proxy solutions, um, the, the SDN-based solutions, all of these moved across in a, in a cloud environment, or the functionality will be moved to the cloud. And then while now you go, while the users access Office 365 or any other cloud-based resources, it moves through the through the cloud-based solutions and then finally connects to the uh, connect to the cloud applications. Thereby, uh, thereby these solutions actually make make the solution secure, make the access secure enough for the end users. The end user doesn't have to now connect to the to the office data center. That's, we are removing the hairpin that comes across, we're removing that extra hop that comes for the end users while they connect to the data center. At the same time, for the organization also, uh, um, the, the complete traffic is visible. That means we have the complete management platform for SASE, uh, which, which actually monitors each and every traffic which the end user would go to the application and ensures that, and, and, and the IT administrator would go ahead and have a complete control on all of these applications. So VMware SASE 
um, is uh, is basically a point of presence that is that is basically uh, the server infrastructure which sits right in between the users' devices and locations, uh, which you see on the left hand side. And then we have then we have all the applications across your data center applications across on the right hand side. So while the users, it, it's it's very clear that while the users wants to access these applications, the user request would move to the SaaS platform, which thereby providing the security layer and the accessibility layer for the end user, and then move ahead, connect to these applications across. So all of your requests and responses that goes across goes through the SASIPOP, um, and the SASIPOP then takes an action depending on the rules, rules and the policies that's configured on the POP. So the functionality that we that that we conclude that we that we have on the on the VMS SASIPOP here is one number one, we can talk about uh, we're going to talk about we're going to talk about secure access as a solution. The secure access is basically um, uh, uh, a tunneling of the a tunneling of the applications from the end user perspective and bringing the user request to the SAS app. Uh, lately, after that, we also have CWS, that is Cloud Web Security, which includes multiple other solutions, right from URL filtering, uh, DLP, anti malware solution, content inspection, and then filtering as well as CASP. We have firewall the service as well, which talks about which was, which gives you functionality of layer three as well as layer four, layer five uh, firewall capabilities. We have SD WAN, which provides WAN optimization, uh, um, uh, a seamless connectivity across for the end users. Let's talk about secure access here. So, so when we talk about secure access, right? Before before we go ahead and talk about secure access. Uh, Let's let's have a look at the traditional VPN infrastructure that we that we use it today. Right? So when we talk about traditional VPN infrastructure, uh, the, the VPN gateway would be in the data would sit in the data, would sit right in the data center actually. And when, we, when the user tries to access any application, the first is the users would need to have the VPN client being connected across the VPN gateway. And after that, I mean every traffic which through which uh, which would go through the VPN gateway, the VPN client goes through the data center. Connecting to the VPN gateway and then forwards the connection either either to the cloud or to the on-prem data center. When this happens, specifically for the cloud-based application, users often face uh, a poor end-user experience, right? Because they have to go through those multiple hops, thereby creating a hairpin problems across for all the end users actually when they go ahead and log into the application. The second and the biggest challenge that goes across is to security. When the user's device is connected to such VPN gateway, the entire device becomes a part of a VPN network, which means when you have any applications in the devices, uh, any vulnerable applications, these vulnerable applications will be able to make a connection to your office data center as well. So say, for example, if I have any vulnerability or a malware or any kind of virus in my device, I would, I would be able to transfer this particular virus to data center as well. Now with this, what really happens is all the BYO devices would not be trusted for the organization. Let's take a look at what exactly happens here. So this is the enterprise challenge that normally, be, that normally is faced across, yeah? Give me one second, please. Okay, so here's a device. Uh, here's, here's a desktop that I have open VPN, uh, VPN client actually, which, which the user goes ahead and connects to this application, connects to the open VPN. The moment he, he fires up a VPN, he's connected to the VPN gateway, and you'll be able to see that the state, uh, the management state is up and running. And I will be also be able to see uh, the byte, amount of byte transfer, transfer which has been done. Now, once this happens, uh, the user can go ahead and confirm like what is the, what is the status of, this, of the VPN network. If you look at this, the VPN is up and running here. Um, and the assigned app, it also gets what is how much what is the VPN UI uh, version that is there. And after this, uh, literally the device is the part of a VPN network, right? So a user's device. So this is this is the user's device, which is uh, uh, which is a BYO device, and the users have all the applications been installed here. So one of the applications, port scanner, the users installed. The user would go ahead, uh, run the port scanner actually. The port scanner is a tool. Nmap basically is, is a tool which is which is which is used to scan multiple ports on the uh, on the data center side or, or any other destination side. So the, all it has to do here is uh, you simply have to run this command and type the IP address, the known IP address. Will actually, once it once it does that, the the port scanner would scan all the all the services and all the ports on this server, 
and we'll find out what are the ports which are open on this particular server. If you look at this, uh, there are a lot of discovered ports, right? Right from 445 to 636, which actually tells me that this particular server could be, a, could be an active directory server itself. If you look at this, I mean, I have 445, I have uh, a 389, I have 636. 389 is, a, is an LDAP, 636 is a secure LDAP, uh, that I have global catalog ports like 3269, 3268. Yeah. Uh, in the same way, I can I can run this tool for any other servers. And uh, the moment I go ahead and run this tool to uh, on one dot fourteen, let's say I mean, this is the IP address, uh, it will go ahead scan scan the services across the servers and find out which are the open ports here. So uh, quickly, the the the, uh, the user will be able to understand like what are, what are the open ports, and the users will be able to go ahead and try to connect to all of these ports using malware techniques. This is, this is the first recon that the user does, the user can do by making use of such kind of tools actually. And that too connected through a VPN channel. Although we say it's a secure VPN channel, but here's the thing, you, uh, with, with such kind of security, when the device is a part of your VPN network, you are able to go ahead, connect to the, um, uh, connect to the data center, connect to the server resources, and you're able to scan all of these services actually across. So now this is what we see at the enterprise challenge, right? What we do as a part of Workspace ONE here is uh, VMware Workspace ONE is a per app VPN tunnel. It creates, it creates an application-based VPN tunnel where you go ahead, define the VPN channel, define the channel to which the application will be routed to the destination. So look, if, you, if you look at the traffic rules at the back, at the right-hand side, you'll be able to see what kind of, what kind of traffic rules you apply. So when I say that uh, uh, Safari from an iPad or an iPhone or Safari from Mac OS would be tunneled to the destination starboard or local. So only these applications, this destination will be available, this will be accessible from Safari iOS, which will be tunneled across to Safari, Safari browser or Safari uh, browser from, uh, from iPhone or Mac OS machines. Same thing goes with any other application for that matter. I can also go ahead and block applications uh, to access Facebook or Tinder.com. The rest of the application is I can even bypass it. Such kind of rules have been deployed across. And if you notice, these kind of rules are based only for an application, not for the complete device. Yeah. Which means with this workspace one at the time, workspace one as an application, I'll be able to go ahead and control what kind of data transfer I can do it across from my device to the destination. Let's have a look at the same, uh, let's come back to the same uh, demo where we talk about uh, uh, the traditional VPN, but this time we're gonna make, we're gonna be making use of uh, Workspace ONE tunnel as an application. So this time we go ahead and roll this device with Workspace ONE as a platform. And, um, and now when I go ahead and log into, let's say Google Chrome for that matter, the VPN tunnel is automatically established because I have Google Chrome defined in the device traffic rules defining the rules where I can go ahead and I can say that Google Chrome, Google Chrome is allowed, but Google Chrome is only allowed for certain destinations. One of the destination is, is my server, which, uh, which is there. When I go ahead and log into this particular server um, and I start working on the particular, particular server. Um, uh, if you look at this, I can, it's just like a normal access for me where I go ahead, uh, log into this particular, log into this particular application, uh, starts working on this particular application actually. Um, and this is just like a normal administrator or a normal user actually that I, that I go ahead and log in. Um, similarly, what I also do here is basically, uh, <clears throat> uh, I, can, I can also go ahead and if I, if I try to go ahead and log into, let's say, this, uh, let's say if I go ahead and msn.com, I would not be able to allow to go to msn.com itself actually. Okay. Now, I go ahead and make use of Edge as a browser. Now, Edge browser is not uh, defining my rules, which means when I try to use any other any other uh, any other application through the tunnel, I would not be able to tunnel this application across. If I use the same uh, same server 1.9, as you see here, I will not be able to go ahead and make successful connection to 1.9. Similarly, if I go ahead and try to make use of, let's say, uh, let's say if I try to go ahead and ping any, uh, ping the same, ping the same server, I will not be able to go ahead and ping as well because ICMP is not allowed from the device traffic rules. If you look at this, I have the same device which is enrolled to workspace, which is enrolled uh, to workspace for platform, uh, but 
I, I define my controls based on application. When I have Google Chrome, I'll be able to go ahead and log into the server. But when I have, when I use any other application like Edge for that matter, or uh, I open the command prompt and I go ahead and log in, I would not be able to log into, uh, not be able to access any services. Let's come back to our demo where we talk about um, uh, the Nmap tool, right? I and mean, I have the same Nmap tool now. I go ahead, uh, spin the Nmap tool across and try to connect to the server actually using the Nmap command line that you can see here right now. And the moment I, I go ahead and, and log in here, uh, uh, I try to run, execute this command. I will not be able to execute this command at all on this particular on this particular same on this particular server. So when I go ahead and log into 192.168.1.10, and uh, uh, it, it start it start doing the service start doing the scanning, but it will not be able to scan because there is no connectivity being provided across from the end map to the to the server 1.10. The same thing goes for, if, if you look at this, I mean, there's no discovered ports here, right? I mean, you don't see any, any ports been discovered across. The user will not come to know what are the, what are the services running here. Same thing goes for 1.14 as well. I mean, if I try to go ahead and scan the services across, I will not be able to scan any services here or any ports for that matter. Let's talk about the enterprise challenges that, that comes across actually. So we have secure access. One second, please. So secure access is basically a, a, a one component of zero trust network, right? Where we, where, we, where we go ahead, define the capabilities, define the solution across for an application, for a service, or for a, for a particular destination. And I go ahead and define it across in one consistent solution, which means uh, VMware Secure Access is a part of a workspace for solution itself. So I go ahead and define the solution across under one policy, under one fabric itself. I can define conditional access and ensure that uh, the device meets all of the compliance before the user can go ahead and log in to any of the destination that you use secure access. So workspace one can actually go ahead, check the device status, check the device posture in terms of device OS, patch type, um, uh, whether check the risk status of the device, whether the device is jailbroken or rooted. As, as well as also check the authentication method which has been used here. And it serves all kinds of workloads. So uh, whether you have your mobile devices or, or you have Windows machines, Mac OS, Chrome OS machine, any kind of end user computing device that you have today, you'll be able to go ahead and leverage your secure access platform. Okay, and this is, this is the complete topology how a secure access would, would be defined uh, in a SASE pop. So, in a SASE pop, you have you first have secure access uh, as, as as a point of entry for all the for all the, all the end user traffic, and then it moves across to cloud web security. In the cloud web security, you have the cloud proxy solution starting right from uh, uh, the the URL filtering, threat analysis, uh, domain based domain based blocking. You have CASP solutions, internet inspection and filtering, and multiple other solutions including DLP. So for the end users, end users' devices should be enrolled to Workspace One as a platform. Uh, when the device is enrolled to Workspace One, the Workspace One will be, will be established across. When the user launches any application, say for example, Google Chrome, as you have seen in the demonstration, the tunnel automatically gets activated. And once the tunnel gets activated across any application traffic that you uh, that, that you make a request from the uh, from the browser, it will directly move to the SASE form where the secure access has been deployed across. And from there onwards, all of the all of the security capabilities that you have defined in cloud web securities would be would be enforced on the application request, and this is how you'd be able to have a complete secure solution. Okay, so there are multiple benefits that you see on secure access. On the user side, you see uh, an easy always on VPN experience. The user doesn't have to go ahead. Uh, type in a URL or uh, type in a fully qualified domain name of a VPN gateway or a VPN URL or a username or password. They're going to have to type that. The moment he launches any application which is defined in the rules, the VPN will be automatically established. And this is established by means of certificate based authentication. Best network experience, you don't have to go to the data center spin off and ha have a hairpin uh, connectivity across to the, to the data center. You can simply go ahead and log into the SASE pop itself, actually, and then you, best, you get the best network resiliency as well. On the IT side, you, you get this as a service, right? When you, you, you are being offered as a service here. So you always have that uptime availability, including the scalability across, actually. And you don't have, uh, you don't have need to define any kind of uh, 
uh, any, you don't have to you don't have to go ahead and uh, pay for any kind of hosting infrastructure. You already you already have the hosting infrastructure being there across. And the most important part is the traditional model to see you have these firewalls, you have the IDS, you have the IPS, and those take up a lot of throughputs actually when you when you see a lot of downloads and uploads happening from the end user side. Right? This is completely reduced now because all of your infrastructure will now be extrapolated across to the SASE environment. On the security perspective, you get an aspect of zero trust, right? If you have an identity, if you have um, you have the user trust, you have the device trust, and you also have the network trust actually, and then you have the application trust actually, which comes across basically. And the authentication method, which is defined across the device needs up, device needs to meet the compliance before you can go ahead and log into any of the any of the VPN resources actually, which is defined. So this is the cloud proxy secure access model. Like how does how does it work actually across and um, so basically, if you look at secure access, we talked about uh, VMS SASE, and in the VMS SASE, we have components of secure access as well as cloud proxy, right? So this is how the complete solution would look like actually when you when you have the devices being connected to the to the, the SASE environment. So you have the devices now uh, being connected across uh, to to the to the workspace one tunnel. Uh, once the tunnel has been established, it will simply go ahead and um, go ahead and log into the uh, log into the uh, infrastructure. Basically, I have if you look at this, I have Edge, I also have Google Chrome, and I have Microsoft Outlook, which is which is a part of my VPN tunnel. So uh, now, when I go ahead and um, uh, look at the look at the complete look at the complete rules and firewall resting actually across, I'll be able to see that Edge, uh, Chrome, uh, as well as Outlook. Is being designed for any kind of any kind of destination. So I can go ahead and log in. Uh, I can I can use Chrome for that matter, and let's say log into Yahoo.com, MSN.com. The application traffic is taken directly to the SASE pop, uh, uh, and and then through the secure access method itself. Which means I can uh, and this and then then in this way it goes ahead and process all the application traffic across. If you look at this, I mean, I have the application, which is uh, uh, where I also have this inspection being made ready here. Uh, I go ahead and inspect each and every traffic here. So basically what I do here is basically, um, I need to ensure that I have, uh, uh, when I go ahead and log into any of the application, uh, the, 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 the SSL, the data, data should be completely clear text for me. To do that, I do the SSL inspection or I do the SSL interception here. And when I do that, basically, I apply my own certificate across, okay? And then I, I'll be able to inspect what kind of traffic the user site is here. Let's say, for example, if I go to any of the sites which have been filtered across through the URL filtering, let's say a music.com for that matter, the request will be completely blocked for me. Okay. And this is done by VMS SASE cloud filtering model that I go ahead and make use of VMS cloud security, um, cloud security platform. I have URL filtering over there, which, which basically, Ensure that uh, the users should not be allowed to uh, to access any any websites or any URLs which is which is not be recognized, which is blocked, which should be blocked by the by the organization. So if we look at this, I mean, uh, I'm not allowed to access gambling.com. And the, the moment I go to gambling.com, um, the uh, the cloud web security will simply throw up an error message a message for me that uh, your request is blocked because it is classified as gambling. Same thing goes with the uh, with the other solutions as well. Like if I go ahead and try to try to go ahead and uh, log into my uh, app volume, uh, log into my resources, I'll be able to go ahead and log into my resources here uh, with the help of the help of secure access solution. And here's the thing: I, I can go ahead and log into as an administrator. If I want to log into my my corporate resources, I'll be able to I'll also be able to go there. Now let's look at this example actually, where I received an email, a phishing email actually, from this particular from this particular site, and uh, uh, this is basically a rewarding site. So when I go ahead and try to go to details of this, it's basically redirecting to uh, to uh, to a vulnerable website. Right? I mean, where it goes ahead and um, says that this is this, uh, where it tries to go to vulnerable website. The moment it goes to vulnerable website, uh, from my cloud security, this particular website is blocked actually. 
So take an example where, uh, where you receive an email, a phishing website, a phishing site. You open the, you open the phishing website, and now if you try to go ahead and click on the link, uh, your, your SaaS solution will actually just block that connection across. Now this is one more example actually where you, where you try to use a remote desktop connection, but remote desktop is RDP is not been allowed on the, on the, on the workspace container. So this will keep on going, but you will not be able to connect to the, to the final destination. This is the device compliance. Uh, uh, so if you, if you look at, uh, when we talked about device compliance, right, which is, which is a part of a zero trust environment. Now, let's come back to the same, uh, same status, where, same demo, where we have a device being enrolled to Workspace One platform. Now, uh, if, I, if I look at this device, I and mean, this device is completely enrolled, I can, I can confirm that by, by going ahead, looking at the device status and the, uh, the sign-in keys. And I go ahead and log into Intelligent Hub, and I'll be able to see that this device has been enrolled across and completely compliant. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, when I go ahead and log into the particular device, when I go ahead and try to access the particular device and, and see of the management platform, I'll be able to see that this device is compliant because I have the antivirus status of this device enabled. Yeah. And uh, with this, uh, when I try to go ahead and log into any of the resources, I'll be able to go ahead and seamlessly access these resources across. On the on the on the particular on the particular device itself. Give me one second. Yeah. So if I if you if you look at this, I mean I have uh, music.com or any other any other website that I go, it, it just simply goes to music.com any other any other website. It goes through the uh, to the VMS as well. Now I have this another condition where the device is in non-compliant state, okay, which means my my antivirus is not enabled here. This is an example. And uh, when I see that the antivirus is not enabled, um, and uh, I can go ahead and log into my not log into my console as an administrator, and I'll be able to see that uh, this device uh, is non-compliant. And the moment that happens, uh, if, it, if, it, if it go ahead, the workspace on will simply get revoked, which means. Um, uh, you won't be having the certificates. Your 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 tunnel is completely revoked. Under these situations, under these circumstances, if you go ahead and try to uh, go to any of the websites, uh, your access you will not be able to access any of the websites here. Okay. If I look at the VPN status here, right, it says not configured, which means all of the configuration which was there because it is revoked now, all, the, all of the configurations are being deleted from the uh, from the device itself. Okay. So, uh, as a part of zero trust environment, right? I mean, there are four main attack vectors that we talk about, right? right? From users to devices, network, and finally to the application. We talk about users. Uh, the most critical component that the users look at here is like, what is the authentication mechanism of the user? What is the conditional access? And what are the behavior anomalies that the user would have? You, you may have a user who works nine to five, but all of a sudden this user starts working at two o'clock in the morning. That's the behavior anomaly. That's one of the behavior anomalies that comes across. Devices comes across with, uh, with having a device trust, which ensures that the device is completely compliant. Um, <clears throat> then we have network, uh, where we, well, we want to ensure that users are coming from a secure network, from a safe network. And this is what is being inspected across when we, when we have VMS actually the solution. Same thing goes with applications as well. Uh, when, we, when an application is installed on the, on the devices, uh, the workspace one of the platform, along with Carbon Black, will be able to go ahead and inspect how is the how is the behavior of an application on this device. If the application tries to tries to interact uh, without any intention with the kernel of the operating system, and it tries to store something on the on the on, the, on these on this on this, on this components on the kernel or the operating system, it is it is found to be a vulnerable application, and the Carbon Black 
will actually provide that particular, uh, uh, will stop the sequence, launching sequence of this application across the devices. So together as an engine of workspace one, we define uh, we define the complete uh, complete controls on the device on the on the access itself. So so all the all the devices, all the users in the devices when they when they want to access any application, they have to go through a different chain of uh, authentication mechanism uh, to ensure that uh, their users the users uh, themselves and the devices are completely compliant authenticated before they can go ahead access any application. Uh, once they are completely, uh, once, once they are completely uh, uh, filtered across, it then moves ahead uh, by means of uh, by means of either by means of uh, secure access workspace tunnel or by means of the SD WAN to the SASE to the SASE uh, pop, and then the, the web security model comes into the role actually. And after that, the users will be able to access uh, their resources. Okay, yeah. so. <clears throat> Here's a simple example of how NGAV or uh, the, the application will work across actually. So here we have uh, the device uh, which has got VMware Carbon Black installed. And uh, when the VMware Carbon Black is installed, the Carbon, Carbon Black will basically go ahead, inspect the application and the services across um, and ensure that uh, this particular services are on or this particular services are working properly. Uh, the moment it finds that the application uh, is not functioning, if it's in, the application is not functioning in the normal way, it will simply block that request. And this request then goes to the workspace point of view. If you look at this, I mean, I have a healthy device. Uh, and because of that, I'm able to connect to, the, uh, uh, to this application actually that you can see right now. Uh, but then later on, what, what really happens is, uh, <clears throat> The uh, user goes ahead and try to try to get a file which is which is basically a vulnerable file. Yeah, and the moment that happens, Carbon Black is able to detect that particular file, and uh, uh, when the user runs this file, the Carbon Black basically goes ahead, detects this file, and say that the application is blocked. The moment this happens, uh, Carbon Black also informs Workspace One uh, about the vulnerability about about the about the file of this particular device. And once that is done, uh, the workspace one takes an action of revoking the panel actually. So next time when the user tries to log into the application, the user will not be able to log into the application. If you look at this, now the user tries to access the application, which access to be to be not allowed. So with this, what we what what we really do here is uh, we we form a complete trust across uh, uh, on the on the uh, on the application access, right? So we, we take care of the device trust, we take care of the application, and we ensure that these applications would not be launched with or uh, or an or a remit, or an action plan can be taken across where the user's access will be denied if there are any kind of vulnerability being found out uh, on the on the device itself. Uh, here's a small model of SSL inspection that we talk about. Um, SSL inspection is basically nothing but the, uh, uh, the user's device, the user's request uh, from any application is first inspected across uh, on the SASE on the SASE pop, and after that, uh, once the, the SASE pop finds it finds it clear request, uh, an authentic request, it simply go ahead and route the particular request across their destination. So. This is what the complete model would look like. So, without the SSL decryption, like we speak without uh, in a normal in a normal uh, request and response mechanism, okay, what we usually see in a, in a in a logging solution, in a solution which is logging all of these traffic, like a firewall or a routing or a, or a layer two devices, you will only see uh, or layer three devices. That okay? you will only see source IP, uh, the uh, the destination IP, uh, the source port, as well as the destination port, right? This is what you see here. And you see what type of action that has been taken across. I mean, you see a web category or a file sharing. That's it. I mean, you don't see anything else, actually. But with the SSL decryption, you'll be able to see a lot of other information, actually, right? And uh, what really happens is, like, if you'll, be able to, you'll also be able to see, along with all of these information that you see in the, in the bottom layer, you'll, you'll be also able to see uh, what type of, what type of, File being used. What is the service URL? What is the what is the action which is being taken from the end user 
and what are the contents of this particular file. So say, for example, if you're uploading or downloading any file, in this, in this case, is, is the file upload, uh, you'll be able to see the content as well. Like, whether it's a company company financial, which is being submitted across, or is it a kind of a malware, which is which is being uploaded across to OneDrive or any other uh, file repository, cloud file repository mechanism. So. <clears throat> The, the complete topology looks like this. So you have an end user which makes a connection. Uh, uh, while it goes through, it, it, it is basically going to CWS, which does the, which does the SSL interception. The CWS sends its own traffic or its own certificate to the device. Um, the, device is, the device connection is then encrypted across with using this certificate. So with this, what, what CWS can do is CWS will be able to read across all the content, action, requests, and responses across, which is which is going from the user to the server. Uh, the same thing happens on the on the key handshake as well. Sorry. The same thing happens in the key handshake as well. Uh, let me bring them that you can see it. Next is content filtering. Uh, we can also go ahead and filter what type of content the user can upload or download. Uh, I can go ahead and say that you should not be able to download or upload exe files or executable files uh, or any kind of zip file for that matter, uh, but they're allowed to download PDF or Word, Excel, PowerPoint. <clears throat> and uh, we also do content inspection. So any inspection services that, that, that we have today, uh, all of the inspection services go through three different channels. Uh, one is the hash check of the file, which is basically an MD5 value of the file. Which is checked. Uh, the antivirus status of the file, whether the, uh, whether the file is clean enough uh, to be to be uploaded and downloaded, and ask, finally the sandbox checking as well that has been done across. And this goes to a cyclic process, which means it goes to a file hash check at first to ensure that the file is not tampered, file is not being uh, modified across, and then it goes to AV scan to ensure there is no vulnerability, there is no malware which is happening. But this is not good enough to secure the file. Right? We also go ahead and do something called a sandboxing. A sandboxing is basically nothing but it goes ahead and runs multiple types of file analysis check, you know, Mul multiple types of file analysis check. So first is the static analysis, which goes ahead and only sees a library file basically. And the other is a dynamic analysis, which basically goes ahead, executes that file in a separate environment in the pop itself, okay? And ensure that the file is clean. And only after that, it will send across to the end user for uh, for the download or it be sent across to the file repository for an upload and an upload action to start. Thus, this is a supported file type. I and mean, then you have uh, most of the file type that we, that we use in our day-to-day -day environment, day-to-day uh, -day work. Uh, we, we use all of these file types actually. All of these file types are supported. And finally, we come across the Anywhere workspace architecture. Yeah. So this is the architecture which we which we usually talk about when we when we, uh, when we talk about the, the complete uh, anywhere workspace as an as an infrastructure basically. So in an anywhere workspace organization, everything starts with an end user. Right? The end user is basically uh, uh, end user is basically everything starts with an end user actually. It's a key asset to any organization. Users wants to have fast and easy access to applications in order to perform their jobs and. Now, this, and now they have to do it practically from anywhere. So and the organization needs, needs to ensure that this will be done in a safe and a secure manner. From an anywhere workspace perspective, uh, this translates into identity and access management uh, and zero trust implementation. Now, uh, this should also identify that uh, basically secure access to application and also to, also to ensure that you have a complete hub app catalog, which, which actually catalogs all of your, all of your applications, right from the web-based applications to native applications here. It should, also, it should also ensure that you have the best form of authentication mechanism, uh, right, saying right from passwordless authentication uh, to, to the certificate-based authentication, single sign-on, modern authentication, as well as multi-factor authentication. Now the, the user starts, the user also builds up, uh, when the user starts working on an organization, they also build up, they also uh, make use of multiple types of devices, right? We just leverage multiple types of devices, which can be either corporate devices or can be personal devices to perform their work from practically anywhere. Now, IT is typically leveraging multiple tools to manage all of these devices, to secure all of these devices actually. 
And when you say securing all of these devices, which means they apply policies, they ensure that these devices are not vulnerable, uh, deploy uh, all these softwares and patches across, provide remote support. Now, in the distributed workforce, typically you see three types of challenges that comes across actually. Fragmented security, as we discussed about, some optimal experience as well as operational complexity. Yeah. And in order to increase, in addition to that, I mean, we have increased cost and risk for the company as well. Yeah. And uh, this combination basically impacts the employee in terms of in, in terms of engagement as well as productivity. Actually, the Anywhere Workspace solution is designed to meet the needs of uh, today's distributed workforce, providing the tools that are integrated to IT itself. Now, having to go ahead as a third layer for this, I mean, we, we, are, we talked about like uh, what are the what are the management solutions that have been, been taken across actually. We discussed about workspace one, UEM, we talked about access, and we also talked about the intelligence platform, basically. So one of these combines to provide you the capability of, uh, of having the best device management, application management, compliance management, including the policy management across for any kind of devices and any kind of application that we use today. Yeah. The users can be practically sitting anywhere, right? I mean, but they, they need to ensure that whatever application they, they access should be secure enough and they need to ensure that whatever whatever application on the user's perspective, they need to in, uh, the IT needs to ensure that it should be a seamless. It should have a seamless experience so that users can be more productive on the application. Okay. Uh, secondly, and the most important part, workspace one also takes care of uh, risk scoring, okay, which is basically an advanced machine language, machine learning algorithm, basically, uh, which basically combines multiple set analysis, including user behavior. Uh, device posture, unusual activity, critical CV, and multiple other analysis actually, which it does across basically. So. Most important factor that comes across here is uh, we talked about uh, VMS SASE pop. So VMS SASE pop, uh, as you see right in the middle, uh, SASE pop is, is the point of presence uh, infrastructure services, which provides you four different, which works in four different components. The first one is secure access, as we have seen, the, which leverages workspace one tunnel. Then we have cloud web security. The cloud web security provides you the capability of defining uh, 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 defining the cloud uh, security, security solution across the security capability across for any application. The SC WAN gateway ensures that you have the best WAN experience. And the firewall is a service, an FW SAS, as you see here defines uh, the capability of layer three and layer four firewalls across in the cloud environment. The workspace from tunnel basically, uh, as you have seen, uh, ensures that all the user traffic is being routed across to the SASE pod. So secure access component is actually the workspace one tunnel. So we use, uh, we leverage a small microservice or a container actually of workspace one tunnel from the native UAG environment, and then extrapolate extrapolate have extrapolate that service across in secure access, which means that any application traffic can be, when the user tries to browse, it will go through secure access in SASE pop. And after that, you have all the other layers, all the other components which comes across in SASE pop, which has cloud web security, SC WAN gateway, as well as firewall, uh, layer three and layer four firewall. Next comes across here is the ST WAN solution. Now, when we talk about ST WAN, okay, uh, as the traffic integrates into the ST WAN, okay, uh, ST WAN uh, uh, activates across DMPO, dynamic multipath optimization. Now, DMPO brings in a lot of other benefits. It reduces the latency, the packet loss, as well as jitter across, improving the complete bandwidth utilization for the end user. The ST WAN automatically chooses the best part of the data center for the end user, all these SaaS applications actually, and applies the remediation. Um, against any kind of latency or any kind of any kind of bottleneck that can come up that user can see across actually in the environment. Uh, we talk about like QoS now. QoS is basically uh, is, is a feature functionality of SC WAN where, where we go ahead and define um, the an amount of or percentage of bandwidth for every application, right? So such as time sensitive applications like a voice or a video application can be defined as the high priority application which will be given extra leverage in terms of bandwidth or extra percentage, extra amount of bandwidth. Whereas the other non-business, uh, non-critical traffic can be, can be set to a lower priority traffic. 
Here is one pair on bottom of the hour. Um, I would I'm done. Uh, I, I would like to open up the floor for uh, to see if there is any questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is just a journey to anywhere workspace. Uh, Definitely a lot of information uh, and appreciate yeah, you uh, trying to cover as much as you can in one hour. Uh, but uh, definitely uh, definitely um, uh, good information and uh, valuable. This is something that uh, uh, everyone is heading towards. So team, if you have any question, concern, anything that you want to um, bring it to up, bring it up to us and uh, talk about uh, either doing a personalized roadmap, talk about uh, where um, VMware is heading with these things, uh, please let us know and we'll be more than happy to um, do one-to-one -one session with you guys. The other aspect here is team. Uh, team we have uh, we have a lab environment here. I just want to demonstrate the uh, lab environment. Moment, do we have time? We can, we can go ahead we are, and we are that. over We are over time. So oh, okay. uh, we can just, um, uh, team, we, we do have, uh, a lab environment that we uh, that that is open for our customers as well. So if you are interested in um, exploring more, uh, we'll be more than happy to either give you access to our lab environment or uh, walk you through the solution and journey with you uh, in the live demo environment. Uh, again, reach out to us or your sales rep, and we will be more than happy to uh, do one to one session with you. With that, I will uh, thanks everyone for attending, and thanks Rizwan for um, for for the time and uh, all the information. Thank you.